We are in Algebra 1, Lesson Number 4, Fit a Function, and we're going to create functions to analyze data. There are three activities in this lesson, a Desmos activity, a three-act task, and one short, very quick little activity from GeoGebra. This should take you one class period, probably even a standard class period could handle all of this in one class period. but. Uh, if you're on block schedule, definitely one class period. So this is not a as long as the prior lessons or some of the prior lessons. So the first thing I want to look at is the Desmos uh, activity. And the first activity is going to be analyzing track and field. We're going to be going through some real world data. The Beats to West is a three act task. And we're going to do a slightly modified version of that, but not much. And then finally, we're going to do a fitting a curve to a scatter plot. So let's start with the Desmos activity. Um, the first thing we have to remember is kids are now on Chromebooks doing these activities and so as a result they're going to just Google most of this information and find it if you don't try to obscure the name. So the first thing I would have you do is look at this screen. They're going to make a prediction for how quickly this woman ran around the track in 2015. I intentionally left off her name and the race so they just know it's under a minute so tell them to pick a number between 0 and 60 if they forgot their 60 seconds at a minute and they're just guessing at this point and then they're doing it again here we're gonna make a sketch of a graph what do you think the graph will do do you think the graph will rise fall will it be curvy will it be straight what's your opinion display those on your teacher's screen now here's where I really want to get kind of pull data out of the kids. I want them to tell me some things that they're noticing. So I would usually assign each group to come up and share something they notice. And the volunteers, I let them volunteer to come up. And of course, if something's already up there, you can't use that. So you need to tell me something else. So if they're having trouble, I've got a long list of questions here of things you could ask to kind of prod them along and get them to think of some things to talk about. Uh, how many countries do you notice here? Which, what are these times doing? What are the record times? Whose name do you see repeated in here? And things like that. So you could ask lots of things about the data for them to go over. Hopefully the time's decreasing. Somebody will say that because that's really kind of the heart of what we want them to notice about this data. And then when you go to the next screen, you're given a set of data and they are to place this line so that it goes through the points. And so here's where you would have a little bit of a chat with them. The whole class, we don't want a lot of points above the line. We don't want most of them above the line or most of them below. We want them evenly scattered about. And then, uh, do you think this line will continue to be a good fit to the data after the year 1985? So the last point posted on this graph is that last blue point. So they need to have an opinion. Do you think this line's going to keep working this well? Because it works pretty well. It looks like these points are pretty close. But it may not work as well later, or maybe it will. What do you think? So let them answer that question and give their ideas here. Now, it's important that you pace your class so they're not looking ahead because if they go too far ahead, they might read something that gives them too much information. So it's kind of hard for them to predict at that point. They're just going to put what they already know. So if you have not been using Desmos Classroom, please play with that, uh, the pacing so that you can keep your kids paced up to the screen that you're on. What I would do is I would just paste them to this point and keep them on this screen and then I would just steady add a screen as you go through so they can go back but not forward uh, so once they've answered that question go ahead and go to the next slide here is the model that i created with my line the equations don't all necessarily come out the same the students might you know have slight differences in their slope and y-intercept but they'll be close to this and so they want to use their equation to make a prediction for the year 2015. well you'll notice that the years are from 1970. So if we're making a prediction for 2015, that's 45 years later. So I would type in this expression, but replace the x, the x quantity, with 45. And then it will do the calculations right in the plank in the Desmos activity. It basically behaves like a calculator, and it will display the seconds on the right-hand side. So have them 
do that or not. I mean, you can let them figure that out. Uh, but you may actually, if you notice a kid doing it, you might have them come up and type it. I sometimes have that type them, have them type it on the preview screen in front of the class or the teacher's computer in front of the class so they can see what, what that kid did. So it's always good to catch a kid doing something good, right? So we, we try to make note of that and, and kind of showcase that. Uh, I would not reveal the winner of this race. Uh, I have some notes down here. Be sure you're reading these teacher moves because it's telling you what to say and what not to say. Uh, when you go to this uh, answer, it's going to ask you to explain your reasoning. So they would need to explain that the X was replaced with a 45 because, and if they didn't use 45, maybe they messed up. They need to tell you what they're thinking and then you can learn a lot about why they're doing what they're doing. So we'll go to this slide and it says, what does the slope mean? Well, that's the change in the time for the race divided by the change in the time, the years. So it's basically the, the time for the race, the total time to run the race is dropping about 0.32 seconds each year. Something like that. Uh, so encourage them to use the labels on the graph to help them answer the question. And same here, the y-intercept is the time it that they started with in 1970. And then here they'll click and it will display the actual result. And then on the next screen it graphs the actual result so that you can see how this line compares to the actual result. And then they need to answer the question, did this surprise you? Because it is way off and did you think it would be way off? And why do you think it was way off? So have them um, talk about it. Why do you think it, it didn't drop there? And then finally, the world record was actually that year, 1985. It has not been beaten since. The person in the picture at the beginning, her name is revealed, her time is revealed. And then I asked them to go back to slide three, which had the data in the table, to find the name of that world record holder from 1985. And I asked them to enter it here. So that way I know they're actually going back and looking at what they said before. Um, and then they're going to answer the question, do you think this will ever be broken, yes or no? And there's no wrong answer. We want their opinion, and we want them to give some explanation as to why they believe that. So once we're finished with this activity, this is the last one, we're going to head over to this, and we're going to do Beats to West. Now, I did include this in your slide deck, but there is a website that pretty much does this entire activity. So going back to your slides, the very first thing you're going to do is play the video uh, about the music. And this is when Beats to West is the three-act task, and this is called Act 1. And in this video, it just puts the names of the artist and has some music. And so they're just listening and deciding which music is fastest, which is slowest, and just typing their ideas, like which city do you think was fastest, which is slowest. So maybe they could type in a couple of names there. The second, the second act is on the next slide, and here's where I need them to start brainstorming. Give me some questions or list some things that you think are helpful for figuring out the fastest or the slowest music. And then they will type in this space here their ideas. This is hard for kids. I, I'm, I, I'd say of all the things I do early in the year, I have to work the hardest to get them to type ideas and questions because they are so used to having pre-formulated packaged work that tells them do this, do this, do this. And so this is really hard and challenging to get them to do but I just keep pulling it out of them. I keep asking questions like, what could you, how would you ever determine who's fastest or slowest? Tell me some thoughts you have. What information do you think you need to figure that out? And just keep on keeping on. Whatever you can get out of them at this point in the year is great. It will get better. Okay, when you get to your uh, slide number four, we're really starting to get into the data. So this data lists uh, the data that was in Act 2. So in Act 2, they did add some more information to your screen, and that was seconds and base hits, and that's kind of displayed on the screen. And then now we're still in Act 2, but we have another screen 
with a bunch of data for all the different cities so they can kind of really see it all in one place. And so I'm asking them to tell me two things that they notice. Now, there, this is a little easier for them because they can look at the data and then make sense of that and say some things. So they may say the numbers are going up in both columns. That's true. They may notice that New York and Houston appear to have a lot less data than the other cities. That's true. They all seem to have stopped at different times, which is interesting. Uh, so that's true. And, and the number of total base hits is different as well for most of them. So they will notice a lots of things. So again, you may assign each group the same as I did earlier. Have them tell you something and you can add it to maybe a list on the board. All right, but this is this next screen is really where the meat of this assignment is or this part is. And that is creating a graph and a linear regression equation for this data. Now you may think, oh my lord, this is so hard and it's so challenging and why would you do that? Um, because it's not hard. It's not, it's harder for the teachers than the kids, I'll put it that way. They will have no trouble with this. So I'm going to show you one right now, all the steps, and uh, it is listed out here how to create a linear regression equation. And they just work through these and so they have five so they'll get to do it five times so if they do this successfully five times uh, most of them will remember it especially if you bring it back tomorrow and the next day so I'm hoping to pull these in over the next few days so you'll see them again but let's go ahead and try Atlanta just to get a taste of how this works so the first thing you're going to do is click on this link and it will take you to the data for all the cities and you want Atlanta so normally I just highlight the columns and copy it like that, but you cannot do that because the title Atlanta will mess up your data. But you can copy seconds base hit, so you just highlight all the data just like that, including the headings if you want, and type Control C on your keyboard. And next you're gonna paste it into Desmos. So you will click on this link for Desmos, it'll take them straight to a graphing calculator and they will just click in one of these spaces and type control V and there you have it. So it is graphed, it is already fit to that data, they don't even have to change anything in their window uh, and that's, that's how simple it is. Now to finish this up we do need to add labels so under X we're going to put X and this was seconds and then Y, and it says base hits is how they call it, base hits. All right, so once you do that, you can see the labels are on there. The last thing you're going to do, go back to the slides, is you're going to type Y1 tilde MX1 plus B. So go back to your calculator, go down to the next row, type Y1, and that's because the Y column is labeled that then type tilde, that's up next to your one on your keyboard, type sh shift and then that key to get the tilde. Type MX1, again this column has an X1 at the top so that's why we're using X1 and then plus B and it will create a trend line, a line of best fit and it will go through the data so you see that there. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a picture of this graph, share graph, export image and my kids usually just copy it from right here you can also download it and re-upload it uh, a lot of kids have their preferences so I let them do what they want on that and then you're going to click over here in this space and you're going to do control V and you're going to paste a picture of the graph with that line in there and then it also says insert the equation which is the screenshot so we're going to go back over to our Desmos calculator X out of this and over here I want a picture of that. So you'll notice in there the equation is Y equals MX plus B and the M is given 1.9 so it's close to 2 and B is negative 4.02 and so we're going to go ahead and take this picture by taking a screenshot with our computer. Then when they go back to their slide they'll do control V and they will paste Control V. They will paste that on here. Now I'm going to make this much smaller. Uh, I think I'll put it right here. It's fine. 
don't really want to cover up my data but that's a good spot for it and so now I can see my slope right there 1.938 and I can see my y-intercept and so I've got Atlanta done so they're basically going to follow that same process each screen so Houston's next click on it again highlight the data but don't highlight the word Houston paste it to Desmos control V add labels to the axis type this y1 tilde mx1 plus b it will create their equation insert a graph insert an equation uh, so you will probably if you're not comfortable doing it practice it with them maybe do the first few they can work in teams uh, I typically try to pick a really tech savvy kid for every group they may not be the kid with the highest grade either sometimes there's kids that are really good with technology maybe not good with the other parts of math so uh, assign them that task of helping their teammates and be sure to not let them type on their keyboard that's one of the rules in class you can never type for another student but you can point to keys and show them things to do if they're stuck and that's what I encourage them to do now once all of these are done they're going to watch this video and it's going to reveal the results but then they need to go back and look at their data and I'm not going to tell you what happens but I do want you to look at the slope of each of these and compare it to the winning and the losing city like which city was fastest which was slowest and so I have these questions that that I want them to answer uh, do your slopes match what you're seeing in this video does this make sense do you agree with them so slopes would be the rate of change so we think of that as the speed or the how quickly or how fast the music is moving along and then I'm gonna I'm also asking this so if you have students in your class that are playing an instrument in the band maybe or they have played an instrument maybe they know something about beats per minute instead of bass hits per minute and you could have a discussion about that would that change the outcome if we were to change this to beats per minute and so you could have a long discussion here so depending on how much time is in your class I would I would get a lot out of this this last slide and this is the last slide for beats per um, beats to west is what it's called the last screen is real quick it's one screen this is just GeoGebra and I would give them the link just like they have here so that they can click on this link and go directly to the little application and here we have uh, a graph and you should notice right away that it's curvy but what they'll do is they'll click up here to draw a line and then they will move it using these two points to fit the data as best they can and then they will quickly discover it's very hard to get this to fit the data it's like I have way too many above the line and not enough below it maybe that's good I don't know uh, that didn't work too good so then we're gonna try something else we're gonna try a curve and just like with the line we can move this stuff around we can move these points around and it looks like I'm getting a better result with the curve so hopefully they see that right away if not we might need to talk about it as a class but all I ask them to do is screen capture this and then place this into their slide deck now once they've placed their their answer they probably need to underline one of these or color it or or even type it again to the right but this is a nonlinear model because it is a curved curved um, graph that goes through these points so not all data is going to come out linear and we're going to get into function families maybe next time I'm not sure what I'm doing next but I, if I do function families we'll revisit this as well so that is the last activity hopefully you found it interesting I'm still working on it so I'll do a little more cleanup and I will post these slides with this video sometime this week sometimes this weekend y'all have a great day